Hi, I'm Nazm Hassan. This tutorial is about making a radial stop in CST. For your convenience, I've categorized them in two types, simpler and complicated version. The difference is the offset angle alpha as seen in the complicated version. This video will reveal the design process of the simpler one and the next video will show the design process of the complicated version. Here's a smart way to deal with that angle alpha, so check the next video to know that. Anyway, this is a radial stop on top of a substrate. The substrate is defined by three variables, SL, SW, and SH, which are length, width, and the thickness of the substrate separately. Let's isolate the radial stub and place it on a Cartesian coordinate system as shown in the figure. And the center is O, and you can define the angle subtended by the arc by a variable theta. And the radius can be defined by another variable rad. And the width and the length of the microstrip line are defined by W and L. So that's how we can parameterize a simpler version of a radial stub on a substrate. And this table contains all the defined parameters and randomly assigned values. The third variable, CUT, is the industry standard thickness of a 2 ounce copper pressed uniformly on the PCB board. You may also use 1, 2 or 3 ounce of copper depending upon your need. These are the industry standard thickness. So all PCB foundries maintain it. You better talk to your PCB foundry to get more detailed version of the information. So why? Why using a radial stub instead of a straight quarter wave microstrip line? The main reason is its wider bandwidth. It offers short circuit for broadband of frequencies compared to the straight quarter wave microstrip line. And another reason may be its compactness. At low frequency, quarter wavelength microsupplying may be significantly long enough and uh, it might not be very practical to implement with a straight quarter wave microsupplying. So a better alternative may be this radial stop at low frequency. All right. Let's go to CST platform to start the design process. So this is the 2016 version of CST. And first of all, turn on the local coordinate system EVW. And then let's make the substrate. Let's name it substrate. All right. And we can consider the thickness along W axis. Let's define the material from material library and type Techonic. We will use Techonic RF35. You can use your own material. Now let's define the parameters. All right. And thickness 1.5 millimeter. Okay. So uh, this is the substrate on which, uh, on top of which we are going to make the radial stop. So let's go to curve menu and select arc and double click on the origin of the local coordinate system and draw a circle and then drag to draw an arc you don't need to be precise all right here is the arc coordinates window let's name the arc first red stop arc and this is the center of the arc zero zero and this would be the first the uh, ending point of the curve and this should be the radius and this would be the angle theta okay now let's assign the values according to that table shown earlier 50 all right ok 
Okay, so the perfect arc that you need has been created. Now we would like to apply a trick. And for that, go to picks and then pick point and double click on this endpoint. Then a red dot will appear and the coordinate value of this point will be shown in this small window. The point name is P1. So we will now create two more parameters to store the coordinates of P1. The first is P1x. Let's define the x coordinates here. Carefully type the exactly x coordinate here. Don't do any mistake. And the next one is P1y for y coordinate of P1. 7, 8, 7, 6. All right, so this is the coordinates for P1. Now we have to make a polygon. So select the polygon and double click on this point. Don't worry about the precision of the point. We'll take care of the coordinates later. Just draw the polygon and complete it. So here is the polygon coordinate window where we will give the precise coordinates. The first point is this and highlighted by the red dot. And the v-coordinate should be equal to radius and this is this point and it should be 0 and it should be negative of L. L is basically the distance from the origin to the end point of the microstrip, this distance. Okay? Alright then, this is the third point of the polygon. Since U coordinate corresponds to X axis, so definitely it will be equal to W, the width of microstrip. And let's say it's one millimeter according to that table shown earlier. Okay. And this one will remain unchanged, negative of L. Okay, now then the fourth point, all right, for this point, U coordinate will not change. So W will be here as well. Okay, W. And then V will be zero, the V coordinate. All right, the last point, I mean this highlighted red dot, we already defined two new parameters for this point, so just write on P1x and P1y for V coordinate. All right, there you go. We created a perfectly designed polygon defined by exact coordinates. Now press OK to complete the polygon. So now you can see that we have two curves and we will make them 3D object now because they are completely 2D geometry right now. So select the curve 1 and then go to Curve Tools menu, select Extrude Curve. And hover the mouse and double click on it. And this is the extrusion window. We have to define the thickness for the extrusion. But before that, let's define the name of this object, red underscore stop. And thickness will be equal to CUT. That is the two ounce copper thickness on a PCB board. And the material is PC, perfectly electrical conductor. The value is 0 0.07 millimeter, which is a standard two ounce copper thickness of a PCB board. So we just created a radial stop. You can see it's a completely 3D geometry. I just turn on the local coordinate system to see clearly. Since it's a parameterized geometry, you can change its parameter to modify it later. For example, changing the width of the microstrip, uh, W, that's just press F7 button to update the geometry. You just see that the width is changed, right? And similarly, we can change the other parameters. 
if you change the L, the length of the microstrip, say 10, and press F7, see, it's changed. So that's how we design the radial stub. Hope you enjoyed the design process. In the next video, we'll design the complicated version in a smart way. So check out for the next video to learn the trick. And if you have any question or comment, leave it below. And thank you for watching my video.